What's poppin' everybody? What is in-game in ESO? Now, I've made a video before about talking about how like ESO is both RPG-oriented and MMO-oriented, but when you talk about end-game, um, you're generally referring to the MMO side of things. So let's go ahead and read what the man is saying. All right, what is considered end-game? I don't play any other MMOs and understand the concept of end-game from other single-player games, but in a game like ESO, what's the timeline? For reference, I'm CP300, a Stamblade, running Hunting's Rage and Night Mother's Embrace. I know that's a craftable set, so my build isn't very viable currently. We're going to break down every single thing that this man is saying. But my confusion is, I've beaten the main quest, barely stepped foot in dungeons with other people, and don't know what my next goal should be. I'm just running zones chronologically for fun, but would like to understand and be, you know, at least a little caught up to speed like everyone else. I can barely speak zone chat language, I don't craft, barely understand dailies, and am overall a lost returning player. Please help. All right, number one, in any MMO, there's a variety of things that constitute what endgame is. But in a game like ESO that's so expansive and you have so many options, there are a lot of things that you can do. Okay, so let's start with PvE or player versus environment. That would be basically not PvP, okay? So you have dungeons, which are four-player activities. You range from normal difficulty to hard mode, and then, or I'm sorry, normal difficulty to veteran, and then within veteran, you have hard mode, you have speed runs, you have no death runs where nobody in the group dies, and then you have trifecta, which would be all of those at the same time. Okay, you have arenas. There are both solo player and group arenas, right? So arenas are kind of what they sound like. It's a distinct kind of area. It's an arena. It's basically just rounds of enemies, waves of enemies, and you get to the end, there's bosses, all that stuff. Solo player arenas are basically the same thing, but instead of a group of four, you have one person. You then have trials. Trials are like raids from other MMOs, but rather than 20, 40 people like you would see in something like World of Warcraft, ESO uses 12 people. There are a ton of raids that have been going since the beginning of this game being launched. I don't even know how many there are now. Probably there's like 15 or something like that. And they add one every single year. They add two new dungeons every single year. There are tons of dungeons right now, okay? Then, then you have, and I'm just talking about the high end game stuff, and then I will go into the other stuff. Then you have PvP. You have very, very serious people in Cyrodiil that will join what's called a ball group. Ball groups are big groups of people that are organized. They run builds together and they kind of sweep throughout the land of Cyrodiil, taking over keeps, trying to get someone to be emperor, which you can learn all about if you're interested. There are also battlegrounds, which are um, a four-person team versus another four-person team versus another four-person team. And you have capture the flag, you have team deathmatch, you have Domination, which is just capturing a bunch of flags all over the place. There's lots of fun stuff, okay? You have housing. So what can you do for housing? Housing, you can craft all of your furniture. Number one, you have to buy a house first, right? So you can buy homes with gold or with real money, and then you can furnish them using crafting in-game, purchasing furnishing pieces with gold, and to get those pieces, you need to farm out the actual plans for them or the blueprints to learn how to create them. You can buy them. They can become rare drops out of content in the game, right? And you have completionism stuff where you do all of the achievements, you try to collect all the stuff, you know, you're doing zone completion right now, right? So a lot of people do that. They try to complete the entire map and 100% the map, right? That's something, achievement hunting, all sorts of stuff, okay? Now, Let's keep going. We're going to go into your second paragraph here. For reference, I'm a CP300 Stamina Nightblade running Hunting's Rage and Nightmother's Gaze. Those are two crafted sets, and they're great for beginners, right? Especially if you don't have ESO+, Plus, if you don't have recent content. Most people that have ESO+, Plus or you know some of the recent content, they may have access to Order's Wrath. Order's Wrath has kind of overtaken one of those two sets, either, either or. Um, it's a, it's a, the most probably effective beginner, um, crafting set for both DPS and healers because you get 8% critical damage and critical healing, right? Okay. So then you said that your build is not very viable. It's absolutely viable. Is it as effective 
as something else, like gear that you can get from dungeons or gear that you can get from trials. No, but it's a great starting point. It's absolutely viable to do all the content you're currently doing and to get into normal dungeons, even veteran dungeons and normal trials. It probably won't be good enough to get into veteran trials or veteran raids um, or some of the veteran arenas you may struggle with a bit, but it's a great stepping stone and that's where you have to start. You have to get good crafted sets like that. Um, so my first goal for you would be doing something like this. If you're having fun, prioritize that. Experience the game, and when you get bored of that, or when you want to try something else, go for the next tier up in um, your gear. And what you can do is you can look up a variety of builds and see what you want to do. So like I was saying earlier, you have the PvE endgame, and you have PvP. So your first thing to do would be to decide which type of endgame that you're most interested in. I'm personally... I don't care about PvP. There are tons of people that love and adore PvP. Both are great. It's totally subjective, right? In PvE, you then want to say, okay, I have the Holy Trinity here in MMOs. That's tanking, which is kind of the guy that starts the fights, organizes the fights, taunts the big bad guys, stays alive, and keeps enemies off of the group, right? Very tanky, very um, high in defense, you got lots of health, all that stuff, right? You have healers, which is pretty self-explanatory. You spend time keeping your group alive, buffing your teammates, and debuffing enemies. And then you have damage dealers, right? So choose one of those three options, and then you can look up builds for those options. Um, and I'll, I'll link these in my um, description down below. But generally, in PvE, for healing, I like to go to the Healer's Haven Discord. That's a really, really, really good resource for all sorts of of healing builds, questions, comments. They've got discussion rooms, build guides, different scenarios, all of that. Tanking, I generally like to go to Hyperoxies for very, very difficult high-end content with all sorts of setups. The Tank Club is another great option. He's got a variety of builds on there that I think are really, really good for anybody that's just starting to get into tanking all the way up to being very, very good at tanking and getting into in-game stuff. And then you've got DPS. There are so many people that create DPS builds, including myself. I've created a few DPS builds, but if you want the best of the best and doing the highest, most effective damage or the meta, I go to Skinny Cheeks because he sits there, parses all the time. He gets all the Excel spreadsheets. Like he just, he sweats over it, right? And so that's your guy. If you want the information on how to get the highest DPS possible, that's who you go to. If you want a fun off meta build that's still very fun, very effective, and that you can do a lot of content in, you can do something like Zynode, Lucky Ghost, stuff like that. And then anything outside of that, experiment with your own stuff. That's what I recommend to everybody. Yes, following a build guide is good, but a lot of people get really confused when they get into these builds and they're like, I've copied this to a T. Why am I not getting 130,000 DPS? I'm only getting 50. And it's because you haven't played the game long enough to experience your class and to understand your class like the person is, um, like the person that is creating this guy has already done, right? Skinny Cheeks has been playing for a very long time. Hyperoxys has been playing for a very long time. All these guys have a ton of experience in the game. They've done the hardest content. It would be pretty crazy if a guy that's just starting out or girl um, was able to do the same things that they're able to do right off the bat, right? It doesn't make sense. So don't be disencouraged by doing that. So number one, my what I say to everybody is focus on the fun stuff first. Figure out your class. Figure out if you like your class, right? Experiment with different classes. See what meshes well. If you're doing PvE, figure out what role is most attractive to you. What have you played in other games? Do you typically go with like a sword and shield kind of person? Are you more magic oriented with lots of healing abilities? Do you like holding a big two-handed sword or maybe dual wielding some axes? Figure out stuff that you like, right? And then go from there. You have to go outside of this game, though, a lot of times for this sort of information. So don't be scared to go out, experiment, and see all sorts of stuff, um, you know, that, that you know, is going on, basically, right? You're going to get a lot of the information from out of the game. ESO has gotten a lot better with this kind of stuff. But overall, um, end game is whatever you want. And I know that's not the best answer, but that is the truth in ESO. It is not 
as clear cut as other games. If you are a completionist like me, eventually, even though I don't enjoy PVP, I'm gonna have to do it because my brain, my end game, is completing all the achievements and collecting all the stuff I can collect and experiencing all the stuff, right? It's not, you know, speed running, trying to get the fastest leaderboard score in high-end trials. That's not what I enjoy doing. So asking what is considered end game is kind of tough because it's always gonna be subjective, right? Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys have any sort of comments, anything that you wanna add to what I've said, please, please, please leave those comments below. Again, I'll be linking stuff down below for um, content creators that I find to be very, very helpful in these different regards. Um, DPS tanking and healing, if y'all are interested, I'd highly implore you to go check them out, show some love. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more daily ESO content like this. And we'll see you in the next one. Peace.